Well, still on the cabinet, the Foreign Affairs Secretary appointee already has his work well cut out, going by President Uhuru Kenyatta's declared position on foreign relations in his inaugural speech. What does it mean for ties with Kenya's development partners? Well, today a host of world leaders and representatives paid Uhuru a courtesy call, but it appears that Western countries are still trading cautiously as they gauge Kenya's new leadership. And as no Oteno report, it seems the president has adopted a more conciliatory tone towards the Western world than he did during his campaigns for the presidency, even as he extended invitation to the East. Welcome. Thank you very Thank much for finding me. President Uhuru Kenyatta is already reaching out to both Chinese investors and the Chinese yes. government, seeking to expand trade ties as he embarks on his ambitious growth and development programs. Uhuru met the Chinese Special Envoy, China's National People's Congress Vice Chairman Zhang Baowen, and vouched for Kenya's agricultural products, even as he sought to assure the Chinese of good investment opportunities in Kenya. Three other Asian countries sent their representatives to meet Uhuru, including the Indian Human Resources Development Minister Dr. Shashi Tarur, South Korea's Special Envoy Chang Bayung Gug, and Sri Lanka's Special Envoy Guan Wardena. An economic affairs analyst at the Institute of Economic Affairs, David Owiro, says Uhuru was always expected to cement relations with the East. These people work in complementary. So uh, as far as funding our projects are concerned, the Chinese can only supplement uh, what other people are doing. They cannot substitute or even replace. But also telling in Uhuru's meetings on the first day in office was the meeting with two World Bank chiefs the World Bank Vice President for African, Makta Diop, and the country representative for the World Bank, Johannes Zut. Even though the Western countries are taking their time, the economist says Uhuru, like other African leaders, will have to reach out to the West for the sake of ongoing social economic programs. If you now you take a simple issue such as health, there are facilities, global uh, facilities that exist, uh, which are provided or available for countries to access and most of these are funded by the so-called West. Now, uh, if you happen to be in the bad books uh, of the so-called West, you are, your chances of accessing these funds, both in terms of uh, quantity, uh, you know, how much money you're able to access, as well as how frequent you are able to, uh, to access these funds, therefore come into play. Uhuru's swearing in speech already sent out feelers to the West in what experts have pointed out was a more cautious statement than the radical statements Uhuru used to make when he was campaigning. I assure you again that under my leadership Kenya will strive to uphold our international obligations so long as these are founded on the well-established principle of mutual respect and reciprocity. Already, he has hosted powerful African leaders, sending out the message that he may have consolidated his ties within the continent. Now, Tino Katie and Prime.